Imagine winning an anonymous art competition, knowing you were judged strictly on talent. Now imagine it's 1870s America, and you're a woman. Anne Whitney was much better known in her own lifetime than she is today. She was born in 1821, and she dies in 1915, which was a very long life for that time period. She, like most women of her time period, didn't have any real formal education, but she somehow got it in her head that she wanted to be a sculptor. And to do that as a woman in this time period was just astonishing, if you think about it. This kind of intrepid nature that you had to have in order to put up with that level of discomfort, because it was a level of discomfort. They had no role models, right? They had no one doing it before them that they could model their behavior on. Sarah Winnemucca was my great-great-grandmother, and she was a Native American woman advocate, which was unusual in her time. She was definitely a friend to her community. She was a visionary. She was very insightful and a very determined young woman who spoke well and communicated well, and her ability to navigate through the changing times was uh, pretty amazing for a young woman in that time. I hope that people stop to learn more about her, because I think there's a lot of statues and people depicted in those statues that we need to know about. They're part of where we came from and how we became who we are. At my birth, my mother named me Artis. Very unusual. She had some insight. My mother, bless her heart, was so worried that I would, she said I'd never make a living as an artist. I had to either be a teacher or to be a commercial artist. And as I say, I knew that I knew that the whole reason for my being here on earth was to follow the fine art field, be a fine artist. The sensitivities, not to please, but to find, be obedient to the inspiration that's coming to you as you create. I'm so strong on this idea of erasing that disrespect with the beauty of ebony skinned and also lack of equal respect for females. So I would hope that my portrayal of her sets a new standard for admiration, just visually and ethically. From the first echoes of footsteps in the Capitol, women have been a part of the story. We've explored more than 150 years of women in capital art, and the journey is only just beginning. You're listening to Shaping History, Women in Capital Art, produced by the Capital Visitor Center. Our mission is to inform, involve, and inspire every visitor to the United States Capitol.